Hey guys, uh, very good morning to all of you. Hopefully now I'm audible to all and you guys can see the screen. All right, great. Thank you so much for confirming guys and welcome all of you to your session number four on web analytics. Uh, even before I start, <clears throat> I think uh, it was a pleasant surprise to uh, catch up with some of the students. In fact, just wanted to share with you that, you know, just a few weeks back, I happened to meet the participants face to face because we, we plan to meet somewhere in Bangalore. And honestly speaking, it's one of the most wonderful experience when you actually get to meet people you've been meeting digitally. <laughs> so, so, so this end of this fourth workshop here is actually just the beginning. You know, the industry is so small, especially the digital marketing industry in the eastern part of the globe is very small. Um, and we are bound to bump into each other soon. So while it may look like we're in the fourth session um, and what will happen after this, don't worry. Um, I sincerely feel that we are definitely going to bump into each other for work or for fun or some other time we'll definitely meet. So I always thought, how will this happen until it happened very lately. So hopefully you guys have gone through the video of uh, session four. You've done the quiz and you've done the tasks. Well, honestly speaking, if you've done the video of uh, session number four, it, it talks about advanced analytics. It talks about what should you observe in your website? So as always, we will just do a recap for around 15, 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes. And then we'll open the house for questions or we'll directly go to a new tool called Radium 6, which you would have already seen in the video. Spend around 15, 20 minutes there as well and take a new case study. All right. So this is how it is planned. And if you guys have any questions, you can post them as and when we arrive on your topic within the recap part of it all right so we have uh, a little less number of participants today but that's completely all right more people will be joining in soon so let's do the recap so in in session four we spoke about running campaigns and measuring returns on it we spoke about the campaign life cycle you know it all starts with deciding a message and a very clear-cut message something that doesn't confuse people so uh, this is not the scope of analytics, but just that it starts there. After that, you, you design your outreach plan. And after the outreach plan, you invest your money in that plan. Of course, you then start looking at measuring your revenue by implementing UTM parameters. And of course, then understand the, the difference between revenue and the investment to measure your ROI. And after that, if you still feel that there is some kind of a budget optimization possible, could you reallocate some budget real time in order to better optimize your results? The answer is yes, of course. So if you just look at the first uh, set of questions that are out there on the screen, they're very so logical, right? What do you want to communicate? How will you reach out to your target audience? How much will you spend? How much did you make? Revenue minus the costs is your returns on your investments. Well, only the tangible part of it, intangible is much more. Could you have invested better? So this is how the campaign life cycle looks like. I'm sure people here who have run campaigns in their lives or probably been a part of the team who have been running campaigns would be able to make some kind of a correlation, right? So yeah, so then there are some examples of it, but let's move on. And we, we spoke about a demo measurement plan. In this case, let's say we have decided that we will run a campaign on social email and banner. You could have run it in different uh, channels as well, but you are keeping it three for this demo purposes and then there are there are sources on which your campaign will be run So the source of the campaign is those digital properties where your ad or your message will be seen channel is Channel is the channel why or which the people will come on your website and a campaign name is the purpose why they are coming on your website and Then what we do is we, we, we assume that we have certain budget and we allocated on the basis of a gut feel and we might be wrong. The only positioning I'm taking here is that, it is that maybe the gut feel is the right feel, but this is just a hypothesis. We will have to prove ourselves wrong or right in order to find out or discover whether this budget allocation is right or not. So we went ahead and allocated this budget, but finally returns on our investment is a real deal. 
And then we imagined that what if we had a magic box and it would give us returns figures at each level. Now, once we started observing the returns figures, we realized that probably our, uh, we could have invested better, right? So in order to put context around how, how could we have invested better, just to observe the campaign level and the source level, we realized that while 100% returns were very good, we were feeling good about it. But at Facebook level, the returns of investment is 300%. And if we knew this information earlier, we could have invested all our money in Facebook alone and made double the money, right? And, and we said this magic box is nothing else but our very own Google Analytics tool. And then we moved on to understanding the definition of what we mean by source and what do we mean by media, right? And then how Google Analytics by default gives us the source and medium of three different uh, different mediums, so including organic, referral, and direct. But if Google Analytics only does this, then how about this campaign that we are planning to run? Will Google Analytics not give us the, the metrics of people coming from email, display ad, and social media? The answer, of course, is it will give. All you need to learn is link tagging or URL tagging. So how do we do, I mean, in fact, what is tagging? It is, in fact, tagging just like a tag on your airport luggage, which identifies from where you are coming and where are you going. And there are five types of default tags that you can associate. These days, only campaign source is mandatory. The rest are optional. A few weeks ago, campaign source, medium, and name were mandatory. The other two were optional. So I think they're making it more flexible. In this case, the source is the New Year's Eve email, medium is email, and campaign name can be near offer. How do, we, how do we do these campaign tags? We use campaign URL builder, enter the values, and you receive a long, lengthy URL, right? Now, this may look a little ugly, but that doesn't matter. The user doesn't get to see this ugly looking URL. But if you observe the construct of this URL, it is a combination of an normal URL. After that is a question mark. And then it talks about UTM source, UTM campaign, and UTM media. Now, when a user clicks on this URL, these tags are passed on to the cookies. And from there, Google Analytics picks it up and transforms it into reports that you want to see. So some best practices are that you need to use consistent spellings, lowercase, uppercase, use the you know, use a spreadsheet to simplify the process. So essentially what we did was, in fact, now uh, let's spend some time in looking at some real cases, right? So what do we do now? Let me take you to my Facebook timeline. So guys, please ignore any random uh, personal messages, but let me click on some ad. Okay. So here it says Manipal Global Academy of Information Technology. Okay. And it also says that it is sponsored. So product managers in the IT industry will be the next wave of CEOs. If you aspire to be an industry leader of the future, blah, blah, blah. So now it is, so Manipal University is giving an 11th month program now, if, Manip if this Manipal University marketing people would like to understand the returns on their investment or, or the monetary investment they have done on Facebook ads, they might be, or they should be rather, using UTM parameters. Let's see whether they're really doing it. So when I click on this ad, it takes me to a new page, of course, where there's an enroll now form and I will click on submit button, but observe the URL. The actual URL ends just here. After that, there is this question mark. And then it says UTM source equal to Facebook, medium equal to CPM campaign equal to 2017 interest product manager desktop. So you see, we are not the only ones doing it. Or let's go and click on some more ads. Let's see if there is one. Okay, good sweet. It says uh, Generating leads with social media, find new customers with social media, and it is sponsored. So it, it, it definitely is, I'm sure that they're paying, pay, paying to Facebook to appear on my timeline. But they would love, like to know the returns. Now look at their URL. It says UTM campaign equal to generating leads with social media, some long name. And then there is UTM source, probably Facebook. Yes, that is. Medium equal to paid social content equal to guide. So you see here that almost all digital marketers are using UTM parameters in order to better 
measure the returns on their investments hopefully hopefully you guys have very well understood this topic this is the only topic that you know most of the marketers and, and analysts swear by it's a very powerful method of um, you know of measuring returns on your investment if you have any questions on this topic i would like to spend more time on it and you know spend as much and take as many questions as you want me to so if there are no questions about it and we have seen some live examples also let's move on to attribution modeling now what is attribution modeling attribution modeling basically means that um more often when the sales process is not you know is not as as easy or simple as it as it may seem to be on, on online marketing because there are no physical sales people doing multiple sales pitches right it's effortless sales you just have to show an ad everywhere people will themselves engage with these ads click on the links to come on your website so the effort you put is is rather lesser and not only that you also don't get to know uh, at the outset which channel played a role so as the name itself says attribution modeling uh forget about the word modeling if you just look at the word attribution it basically says that out of various channels that played some role in order uh, uh, for, for for someone to help make a purchase whom do you want to attribute the success of the sale to right so there might be many channels which a person is engaging with example is it may so happen that somebody receives an email with a hyperlink in it and people click on it to then go and purchase the product but what you may observe that it's not the email it's not the only email that is actually doing the job the user has been interacting with some similar campaigns via organic search display ads and then later an email would have arrived you felt like clicking on it now and then the conversion happened so while organic search and display ads or any other social media campaign or even sms campaign would have played a role in setting up or or formalizing this communication email probably was the last hint or or you know the last trigger where the user decided to make a purchase but email alone could not have done it Right, so Jay says, can you show an example where campaign text is used? Um, what is campaign text? Uh, could you please explain, me, Jay? I don't understand the word campaign text. Oh, campaign term. Oh, great. Why not? Absolutely. So, see, Jay. Actually, if you just look for some examples. Um, Okay, let me just directly search for something. You don't have to use campaign term because if you are using Google AdWords, it automatically does it for you. So if I search for best digital marketing courses, okay, there is something already searched, and you see some ads have appeared, right? Digital Vidya is one of them. Then Digital Academy India is one of them. Talent Edge. and some digital course pro so something like that so these are few ads that appear right let's see whether any of these are using campaign term so campaign term by definition is used to identify uh paid ads terms that people type in to search for your ad so for example the term that i have used to search for ads is best digital marketing courses or i may have searched for best digital marketing courses in india it's a different term right so let's look at this one sp jan 6 month full time program when i click here i'm not sure whether they're using it but let's try okay look at this utm term they are using it it says the word courses in digital marketing Okay. Observe this thing alone. Forget about the rest of the URL. Yeah. So, for SP Jan ad to appear on the ad space when somebody types in any keyword that has the word courses in digital marketing, 
you remember the keyword that I typed was best digital marketing courses in India and this came up because the word courses in digital marketing was a part of that term. Now imagine I would have done a different search. I would have done top social media marketing courses. This, this is a different term. Let's see whether now SPJAN comes or not. Okay, it doesn't because they're not optimized for it. They're not paying for it. Now imagine if they would have been using that keyword term as well. Then at backend reports, Jaya, you could have seen a report that what are the keywords people are typing? Are they typing best digital marketing courses or are they typing best social media marketing courses? And on what kind of keywords are we appearing on ads and people click on it to make a purchase? Now, is the social media marketing course is getting us more revenue or whether the digital media marketing course is getting us more revenue? This is where the UTM term is used. In order to identify what are the keywords or search terms that people are typing in and then you appear. So in this case, let's say if I click on simply learn social media marketing. Look at this. They are using UTM term social media certification training. So if somebody is using social media training or something, if, if you appear for that, then you have to observe for which kind of keyword people are searching and clicking on your ad. Right? So you may be paying more for some keyword keywords, you, you may be paying less for some keywords. You need to find out right which ones are performing better. So Jay, I, ho I hope I've answered your question that this is only used in order to identify which search terms are working for you. And you don't have to make it uh, manually. If you are using Google AdWords, all of this information is by default given to you in your AdWords dashboards. Okay, first is but how to apply it on URL builder. Okay, first, so, so you know what? UTM term is not only used for Google Ads, right? You may be you may be appearing for some keywords in some other ads as well. All right, so just in case you're appearing on Bing or you're appearing on Yahoo, or if you're appearing on any random search, not even an engine, right? So for example, uh, 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 let me search for something on Facebook, okay? I search for social media marketing courses. Okay, social media marketing. So these are the pages, these are the news. Okay, these are the posts. So now, it says seven best Instagram marketing courses 2017. Now, I may want to put a UTM tags for such URLs as well. And hence, you will create your own UTM parameter for such search results as opposed to Google search results. So, so this is how I will use it. Oh yeah, so some, something is already written here. So if there is no campaign term here, I will write social media marketing, let's say. And then maybe copy this URL or convert this into short, URL, short this URL and use it wherever I believe users will search for social media marketing courses and only then this URL should appear anywhere. Now campaign term, you know, uh, basically says that you might be using search engines other than Google, there you may want to create a fancy or you may want to create a tag URL. But when it comes to Google AdWords, it does it automatically for you. In fact, when you create AdWords, I don't know whether you've done that course or you will do it in future, it asks you what is the actual URL you want to use versus what you want to display. So for example, here, observe the difference. The URL that is shown here is just this simply learn.com slash social marketing. But when you click on it and go inside, look at the URL is very different. So what is it that you want to display versus what is it that actually is? And this is almost everywhere in every search engine you want to advertise. So where you put actual URL, you put the campaign term voila URL. So Fez, does that answer your question how to apply it in URL builder? And how to use it apart from Google? Cool, very nice. Yeah, so coming back to attribution modeling, if there are more questions on UTM parameters, let's take them now. Let's take them now. 
But guys, let me tell you this fourth session is best understood. Uh, if you, even after this training, after this workshop, you go through that particular session one more time. Okay, so I said I think the best practice slide was not in the video. That's fine. So it's, it's essentially a simple best practice. We've also spoken about it that whenever you're using UTM parameters, so whether you're using capital letters or you're using small letters or you're using, using camel case. So sometimes people use Facebook. Sometimes people use FB. Sometimes people use email. Sometimes people use mail. Sometimes people use Gmail. It's just that you need to be consistent in your spelling. That's the only thing I want you to care about in best practices. Because if you're using different kind of spellings or lowercase uppercase, then you would not get coded reports. That's all. Yeah, anyways, you all, all of you will have access to this PPT uh, soon on your LMS. We're just trying to format it for you guys and it will be available if it is not available already. Yeah. Yeah, so now coming to attribution modeling. Very interesting case, I would say. Um, yeah, so as I told you, where many channels play a role, many touch points play a role, but not always they are credited for the role they play. Okay, just even before I tell you this entire story, do you know that across industry average, again, this number seven emerges, I don't know, seven is, is, is a magic number somehow, but I still don't believe in that number seven, but everywhere on books it says seven. That if you are searching for something, as in not Google search, you are thinking of buying something, maybe a piece of furniture, a sofa, or maybe a mobile phone, even a house, or even a pen, across industry average, you need to be touched by the organization seven times before you start taking that company seriously. I'll give you an example. If you are planning to buy a 2 BHK house or if you're planning to buy a Honda City car, you will be touching this organization at least seven times before you make a purchase. It will be more, but at least seven. So you might see a hoarding of a 2 BHK apartment somewhere and then you do a Google search probably a friend then talks to you about it and then an email comes into your inbox and then an ad starts to appear on your timeline, Facebook timeline. So if you, if the organization has been touching you online or offline or by word of mouth, if it happens seven times, then you actually start considering that particular product or service seriously. I'm sure in other uh, digital marketing modules, you'd be learning about it. This is analytics, but essentially what it means is that People misinterpret this number seven and try to bombard you with a lot of ads, which is not the right thing to do. You know, you can't touch a user or interact with a potential customer seven times in a single day. You know, it kills your brand. It's just that it has to be organically felt rather than pushed. Now, if let's say the ninth time when you interact with that brand, you know, maybe you get a phone call from somebody that you inquired with us. Uh, would you like to know more about our product? And that's when you decide, hey, wonderful, thank you so much for calling, I would like to buy your product. Now, do you believe that the call center person who called you actually made the effort to make a sale and the sale should be credited to that person? The answer is yes, there is a credit to that person as well because that triggered the purchase thought. But a lot of assistance that have happened in the past seven or eight interactions you know, all of that, as they say, is called brand building, or as they say, building your brand, making your brand come to top of the mind. So the user journeys can be any before you purchase. Or if you look at this particular set, and I have tried to put this forward to you guys as a case by saying that if you see there are some assisting channels and some converting channels. Observe the converting channel, it says, out of the four purchases you have just done, let's say last half an hour, four products got sold. Two of them got sold by Google Ads, 
one by email, one by organic search. It looks like 50% of your revenue is coming from Google ad, 25% from email and 25% from organic. But essentially, that's not the credit you should give to them. Google ad is playing the converting role, but what about social media? Has it not played any role? The answer is no. Observe social media. They have been, this particular channel has been playing role on every conversion. It's just that it's not making the goal. So it's like a soccer game, right? There's a striker. You know, there's somebody in the forward position, but the ball will be passed on to that position in forward to pass the ball to that person and he will make the goal. But it's a team effort. So you need to observe how team is also behaving. At the same time, imagine if you see that social media is not making any conversions. So should we not spend on social media anymore? Or should we? So our social media marketing budget every quarter is let's say 15 lakh rupees. So let's stop doing that. And it is not doing any conversions. But that's not the case. And funnily enough, this is what one of my client experienced. And that is when even I for the first time also realized this concept. That if you say that 15 lakh rupees on social media is getting wasted, and hence very logically you say, okay, let's not spend it anymore. And you know, sometimes we try to justify also real estate industry, social media doesn't make any sense, right? So sometimes we force fit our observations into justifications. So we stop doing social media marketing uh, and, and stop spending that much money there. Funnily enough, Google AdWords started performing lesser and lesser. Emails did not, um, you know, did not, were not performing as they were. And even all other channels started not, started, you know, uh, showing very, very pathetic results. Just because something that was not helping converting any customers, we stopped there. The other high performing channels also stopped performing. That's when I personally, probably in my life, realized that not that every channel need to convert you need a lot of us you need a team that will help convert later so essentially what we spoke about uh, and then here is something that came out of the story the customer finds your site by clicking on one of your adware ads she returns one week later by clicking over from social network that same day she comes back a third time via one of your email campaigns and a few hours later she returns again directly and makes a purchase it looks like the last direct uh, channel was the converting channel, but then yes, social network, email, and AdWords have played a role. Now you need to understand what kind of an organization you are, what industry do you belong to, and then choose the right model to give credit not only to the person who makes the goal, but to the entire team. Imagine AdWords, social network, email, and direct are four players in a soccer, soccer team. And all of them are trying to make a goal. The, the person whose jersey says direct channel has just kicked the ball and the goal happened. But there's a role played by others as well. Now, what is the role and what percentage of the role is played by others is determined by what kind of a company you are. So, for example, the first model says last interaction model, which is a by default model. In this case, the direct channel would receive 100% of the credit for the sale. The last non-direct click attribution model are, you know, is that kind of a model where all the direct traffic is ignored and 100% of the credit goes to that channel which happened just before a direct conversion. Now, this is very interesting, especially when people remember you, they try and come directly. So what is the meaning of direct? It basically means that somebody remembers you so well that they type in your URL in the address bar and hit enter to come to your website. That's direct. And when will somebody come directly? When their previous interaction with you has been so engaging that they've started loving you and they know that they want to buy. In such a case where people are coming directly to make a purchase, it means an interaction before this has made an impact. And that's last non-direct click attribution model. If you look at some other models, which are last AdWords click attribution model, I don't see anybody, any of my clients using it, unless you need to justify or spend on AdWords. So if AdWords is any of your touch point in the sales touch, sales journey, then all the credit will go to the AdWords ads. 
of course, for somebody who wants to justify the spend on AdWords to their CEO, then this is the uh, lifesaver. Otherwise, people don't use it. The first interaction attribution model is where awareness is the primary motive of your ads. So whether it is, uh, uh, you know, mostly NGOs and healthcare NGOs talk about it, where making money or um, selling a product, clicking on the buy now button is not the primary objective. It's about making somebody aware. So for example, Pulse Polio Drop Campaign, which Amitabh Bachchan does. So most of these digital ads uh, would measure their impact on first interaction attribution model. Because if somebody got interacted with us or interacted with us once, that means they've gotten aware of the campaign. So if you're an NGO or if you are not for profit or if you believe I'm launching a new product in the market, it will take its own time for people to adopt my new product. It's for the next few years, we have to invest in letting people know about the product. And then you use first interaction attribution model. In this case, the AdWords ad will play the major role because somebody got to know about you from AdWords ad and not directly. Then the linear attribution model, that means everybody, all the players get equal credit, 25% each. And then these are the two most important and widely used models. The time decay model, which means the latest channel which you interacted with closer to the purchase will get the maximum credit as you go back in time the credit goes lesser and lesser. Position-based model basically says that the first and the last interaction matter the most and everything else will receive 20% of the credit. 40% goes to first, 40% goes to the last and the rest 20% will be equally distributed amongst middle conversations or interactions. So that's about it. In fact, we, we studied it. And if you have gone through the video, uh, all of this can be done. Um, let me show you where. You go to conversions, you go to attribution, you go to model comparison tool, select a good date range, or probably change to something more. Okay, so have a look at this. So it says each of these channels will have some role to play, direct, organic, social network, referral, and others. But this is with last interaction model. Now, if you change this to time decay model, look at the values will change. So direct now has a different value as opposed to referral. Referral was not in the last. Now it has become fifth. So you see, based on what kind of an organization you are, while referral may not have offered any conversions, it is still assisting a conversion. But look at the assistance is as low as 3.15% of all your conversion. But now, looking at 3.15%, you will value it even more as opposed to when it otherwise looked like 0% conversion. Similarly, social network and organic. You may also want to look at conversion paths. We discussed about it um, in the video, where it looks like what are the what are the paths people are using. So this is uh, for a dummy blog. It looks like many people are coming on the website directly. But if you look at any other website, let me, let me move to the demo website. Yep, let's look at top conversion path. Yeah, so guys, so all of this essentially is just a way to tell you the capabilities of the tool. So now I would say, forget about all of this we have done. Okay, so let's let's not get into uh, the details of an example, right? We have to get into details of our own organization. But in last four sessions, what we have done, if you observe, is that we started with something as cool as, you know, why is analytics so important? And the philosophies of analytics, we started with whether should we analyze, whether we are okay with incremental improvements or whether we need transformation changes and how to look at analytics by having objectives in mind and how do you get objectives by having uh, questions, right questions in mind. Then we moved on to the definition of web analytics. We started integrating web analytics with our website. We started looking at filters and we started looking at goals, started configuring stuff. 
then we moved in session number three to look at three configured reports right session three has been a good journey in terms of you know the responses i received from you and your feedback on how many of you have already started using it in your own businesses guys if you want to revisit web analytics module i would say session three and four are something you should revisit anyways it will help you run your digital marketing campaigns much better now just look at this report you know for example it tells me many things do you see from row number 1 to row number 10 organic search has not been playing a major role in your conversions or maybe row number 9 it tells that you know organic search has been playing some role but i believe if you just stop focusing on content so that people you know are not able to from there on not not finding you organically then it is a lot of revenue leakage not only from row number two but row number seven and also row number nine but how do you ensure ever in your life that people will remember you directly because direct majorly happens when people stumble upon you while via other channels so if you look at some people have come to you directly well it doesn't mean that they were they knew about you like when they were born, right? These people are coming directly when the look back window is 30 days. Look back window is how many days in the past should I go to observe people's interaction with my website. But if I take it to 90 days or so, you know, then probably the data may look a little different. Or imagine if there was a capability to go back in the history to nine, not 90 days, but uh, 90 months of course there would have been no channel that will be direct i hope you're getting the point nobody comes to your website directly these people who are now coming directly are basically an impact of their earlier interactions with your website via other channels and it matters a lot my dear friends my dear marketers that you need to understand how they are engaging with you. And most in this cases, if this is your website, then a good referral data is coming. I mean, referral users are coming. And of course, organic search is coming. You need to focus on these two. And in fact, I personally tell to my client, forget about direct conversions. You know, that is more organic than organic search. It will eventually happen only when you focus on other channels. So now you know, if you want to spend money on digital marketing, Social media is not even appearing on your website. Can you imagine? So should you not should you now stop doing your campaign or um, on social media? It doesn't even appear in top ten. Maybe later it may. So let me just look at more rows. And this is basically not focusing on the last interaction. It is telling you all touch points in the interaction. So if social media is not playing a role, then you know it is not playing a role at least. Yeah, so paid search has appeared okay social network is there on row number 69 so uh, you need to know whether this revenue is important to you if it are, if it is then please go ahead but otherwise social network doesn't look like a very promising for this particular website so i hope i hope in last four workshops analytics has added some foundational strength to your digital marketing yarn. If it has not, then I believe there is more for both of us, for all of us to redo. But I sincerely believe, especially receiving the feedback from you guys, almost all of you have said how you guys have uh, now started using it in your organization. And that's most promising to me. Now, in the last few minutes of today's workshop, I want to talk about worldwide web analytics. We spoke about that in the video, where how Radiant 6 helps organizations to understand metrics, understand conversations and behaviors of people outside of their website. And we'll spend not more than 10 minutes on that. And then I'll open the house for more questions. So the Radiant 6 dashboard is like um, you know, a blind a blue sky. It all starts with configuring the configuration of the tool and then adding the right keywords you would want to listen 
and then looking at reports. Now, all of that you would have seen in the video. Let, let me directly move to what kind of reports can you um, can you see in this dashboard. So let's say if you are analyzing Amazon versus Flipkart. These are the two organizations um, they would like to observe in the last 90 days. And I say done. So this river of news report gives me all the conversations that are happening around these keywords on a worldwide web and brings all of it to me in a single dashboard. Now look at the number of posts that have happened. It says 8,75,294 with a scope that only the English ones are we are picking and only those ones which are in the country, in the geographical boundary of India. If I make this worldwide, the number of conversations with Amazon will be much higher. Amazon being a worldwide brand, Flipkart being Indian. So I wanted to keep your apple to apple comparison. So there are people talking about your brand. You may want to observe. And, and the latest tweet or Facebook update has come, which is at 10.41 a.m. April 2nd. And the time right now is 10.43. So it, you're near real time, probably two minutes delayed. I'm sure there are more tweets between 41 and 43. Now let's do some analysis on it. So I select the same topic profile and observe my competition and my own brand in last 90 days and see the trend chart of the number of conversations about me and my competition. Great. So look at this. I have been beating the competition. So my brand is shown in dark blue color and my competitor is in light blue color. So if you observe this, Overall, on an average, I've been beating my competition, apart from a few days so where my competitor on Jan 23rd was faring above me. And then again on March 7th, and then on March 21st. But if you observe this date, which is March 29th, I mean, I have 100 times more, not, not 100 times, maybe some percentage, a huge number more than my competition. Why am I? Speaking on, uh, on, on March 29, maybe I was running some campaign. Let me, let me click here and observe conversation cloud. Why are people talking about me uh, or my brand in such large numbers? So this conversation cloud will give me a random, uh, you know, use of words out there. So there is no particular specific, or maybe you're running some great offers on the website and people are using the word Amazon so I don't know whether people are using the word Amazon for the right or the wrong reasons. So I may want to observe sentiments of my brand. In order to do that, let me go to new topic analysis. And then observe my two different entities. One is myself and my competition. Yeah, so it says I've been talked about 60% of the times and competition 39%. Let me do some segmentation on it on the basis of sentiments. So you see the amount of analytics that is available out there in the market these days. And how can you live or how can your organization breathe without doing simple number crunching like this? And it's not rocket sciences, right? It's such easy stuff. But it tells you the, the health of your organization out there. So I hope you have seen all of this in the video. If you have not, go through it one more time. Um, it's very important for you to at least know the capabilities of analytics out there if you want to become an expert. Of course, it is taking that long to do sentiment analysis. Oh, it says you have reached over five lakh results, of course. So it is difficult. Cool. I'll do it for the last three days. So Fez says, is it available uh, free? Of course not Fez. Radiant 6 is one of the most expensive tools out there. I think the license fee starts with, I think, 8 to 10 lakh rupees per user per year, with the upper limit of 1 million conversations per year. If you are gathering more than 1 million or 10 lakh conversations, you will need to pay a little more. Now, if you see 1 million is not a big number when it comes to Amazon versus Flipkart, you're already reaching 0.8 million. 
So if you're reaching a million plus, then of course you need to pay extra. But yes, there are some tools which are not as expensive as Radiant 6. One such not very sophisticated tool is trackur.com. It gives you a 30 day free trial just in case you want to use it. So if I click on try it for free, it says 10 day trial of the premium plan, no credit card needed. So you can try this if you may want to. Now, another decent organization that is doing a good job in, in uh, social media and listening and analytics is Meltwater Buzz. It's a good organization. So, Buzz is the name of the tool, and Meltwater is the name of the company. It's, it's not really an Indian company, but a decent. A decent tool on analytics. You can try this as well. So the, I hope they mention price. They don't mention price. Okay, great. But you can check for pricing there. So guys, that was from my side. Hopefully, and I want to listen from you. Uh, hopefully, the last four workshops have added some value uh, to you guys in your digital marketing uh, career. Hopefully it will help you. Uh, the house is now open for more questions, but the link that you see in the chat window is now the feedback link for your last four workshops. The feedback and the reviews that you will leave will now be visible to other students who might be deciding or you know, it will help decide other people whether to take web analytics course or not. So do spend some time on writing the review and also guys, uh, this is just the beginning of our relationship. If you really want to stay connected, I'm in Bangalore, I keep traveling to Delhi. And even if we are not meeting purposefully, it's just a random meeting. I'm more than happy to meet. And of course, the industry is so small that we are, bump, we are basically going to bump into each other soon. So whenever we meet, say hello. Uh, <laughs> that's all I can say. And uh, yeah, so that's about it from my side. If you have no questions, you can say bye-bye by leaving feedback. If you have questions, then please post now. Okay, Fez has a question. Okay, I think he has picked one from the quiz. Uh, do you want me to answer this question? Or do you want me to explain the answer? So Fez, I want you to Google. Okay, you didn't understand the question itself. Okay, let me explain the question and I'm sure you will find how to do it. See, what happens is that, okay, let me Google something for you and then you will find the answer. Wait, uh, replace, fill, replace. No, oh, I think this is the URL. Hang on, let me show you something. So when you are going and doing your filters, Feds, there is an option called search and replace, right? Where is that filter used if you've done your hands-on exercise and tasks? Uh, so let me give an example here. Look at this. Now many people actually have this nightmare where the URL does not tell much about what the product is. So if you look at this URL, index.php department id 33 category id 1 product id 4439643373 now as an analyst you don't know which page this is you'll have to click on it to open it and see what this you know page is about whether are you selling shoes here or whether you are selling t-shirts or whether you are selling hat you don't know the product is the category apparel or is the category shoes is the category electronics because these are, you have demonstrated in the URLs by some numbers. So what you do is you use the filter search and replace. And then you change category ID 5 by sweater, product ID this by Tasso, Elba, Cashmere sweater. And once you do that, your URLs in the reports will change from those random numbers, which doesn't make sense, to very readable reports that you will know that now you're looking at men's section, sweaters, and v-neck sweaters, or men jeans, loose fit jeans. So if you now relook at the question, 
is that it says you manage a website that sells household appliances. Your website assigns product ID 17 to all pages related to refrigerators. Now you would like to have a view where your data includes only pages on your site related to refrigerators. Which of the following would you accomplish this and how would you do it? But so now phase, do you understand the question at least? Have I made the question easy to understand? Okay. Now I hope if you just read the answer, it's a very simple question to answer. And I'm not going to answer it for you. You'll have to take some time out. And if you don't have the answer, that's okay. Google it. You'll find the answer. The idea is to make you guys more curious than to give you answers, right? <laughs> All right. So guys, hopefully, okay, Sonak says, sir, I have to say you are the best trainer at Digital Vidya. The videos were brilliant. Thank you so much, Sonak. My pleasure. So please say that in the feedback. <laughs> Chandani says, I understood the campaign URL builder on Facebook, Twitter, but do not understand how to use it in email. Can you make a campaign in your mail and show a demo? Of course, there's Chani. Give me five minutes, I'll do it for you. So, so let's do one thing. Um, I am sending an email to Chandni right now and creating a campaign out of it. Okay? So let me go to Gmail. Ignore my inbox, guys. There'll be some random emails. And I click on Compose. All right? So I don't know how to use... Uh, I'm not purposely not using MailChimp or anything else. But let's say, Chandni, I want to send you a URL or an image where you will click on. So let's say I'm saying, I'm selling jeans. So let me look for a good jeans image. This one. I'm going to, I have to do all of it because <laughs> I will need to post something here. Wait. I am saving this image on my desktop, jeans for men, and I'm uploading it here. Can I copy and paste it directly here? Okay. So Chandni, I'm sending you something. Can you share your email ID here? And in the meanwhile, let me go and create a campaign URL builder. Where is it? Where is it? Here. So what I will do is now I will create a UTM parameter for email. All right. So let's say this is the URL. My source is Sunday email. My medium is email. My campaign name is New Year offer. I don't want to write term and content. And or rather, let me write the content as jeans. Now this is the URL that I have just created. I don't need to convert it into short. I will not shorten it. I'll just copy this as is. What I will now do is select this entire thing and hyperlink it. And how do I hyperlink it? Like this. And I say okay. And then what I will do is send this email to Chantani. And I say 10% off on Levi's jeans. And I send it to Chandni. Now, when Chandni will click on this URL to come on my website, I will know the campaign name, the campaign URL, the campaign uh, you know, destination, the source, and everything else. So, Chandni, does it answer your question? Unlike, so you can do the same thing for not only Facebook, Twitter, but also hyperlink and image. And when people click on this URL, observe how the URL and where the URL is taking you to the same landing page where you're running your campaign. At the same time, Sunday email, medium, and stuff. All right. So hopefully that answers. And any more questions? Guys, I'm just reminding you one more time. Feedback is important. Do give your feedback.
So from my side, I am done. And thank you so much for spending your four Sundays with me. It was rather very, very uh, learning experience for myself. Thank you so much for asking those very good questions and helping others also by asking your questions. And I leave you there. Hopefully you had a good time and see you soon sometime. See you guys, have fun and enjoy your future sessions with Digital Vidya. Thank you, bye bye. And do not forget to leave your feedback. Bye bye and have fun. Look forward to your feedback. Bye bye.